Hello everyone, Game of Thrones here and welcome to Parish Village. Today we'll be taking a look at this little village that I recently built. And while the sun is rising and you're listening to the intro theme music, let me explain um, something about this little village. First of all, this is where it's located on the map. And well, as you can see, there's not really anything else here yet. But my idea is that as we progress in our quest to create Arenal, we will expand the map. So each time I show you something new, it will pop up on the map and thus the continent of Arenal will unravel. But as you can see, this is the village. And well, the, the, the way you would arrive here would be by boat. Um, because the guy that lives there He's, um, he's the founder of this village and he is c called Lord Parish and he comes from well originally he came from the the capital city of this continent which is called Carathon and he arrived here because he wanted a place to study he's an astronomist uh, a guy who studies the stars and space and everything so he wanted a place to study and as you can see he's got an, uh, himself a little observatory here um, so that is how you get here and that is how this village was founded because then people realized well this guy he, he's got lots of money he's a lord he, he, he says oh damn it's raining ah well that's just how it is sometimes right um, but well, this guy, he's a lord, so he, he'll be happy to, to pay for, well, as you can see, crops, for services like uh, wood cutting, um, for medicine, herbs, all that stuff, for meat, um, he'll be happy to pay for it, so we'll move and, and create our own little village in the shadow of this amazing observatory. Well, let, let's, let's just skip the rain for a moment and start the tour of Parish Village. So, let's begin with an overview. Parish Village has 15 citizens or, well, <laughs> occupants. That's not much, but, well, it's a tiny village and they are divided as follows. In, in this house we have the woodcutter, He's, he lives here on his own and he has a workshop located here. Then we have a farmer living in the yellow house with his little field in his backyard. We have another farmer living in the red house and he or she has a larger field located here. Then we have uh, two uh, fishermen's houses first one being the brown one here that's a family of three uh, a mom and a dad and a, a child who would supposedly help on the boat in the blue house lives another family of three and I, I, I imagine that the kid here is, is a small one so uh, the father is also a fisherman helping on the boat and mother stays home with the kid and maybe well she can work in the field occasionally Alright, then we have the herbalist located here and the herbalist has an apprentice, to that, that's two. Then we have the hunter who lives by himself further away from the village. And at last we of course have uh, the residence of Lord Parrish uh, who lives in a, in a house with his observatory and he has two servants one of them being a cook and the other is a gardener and the reason why i use a crown to symbolize his house is again because he's a lord coming from the capital city of carathon in which the king lives so he's a lord appointed by the king and therefore he's well of, of royal status i guess and of course we mustn't forget the little pier because the pier is actually essential both for fishing and for traveling so that's the population of Parish Village. And now let's jump back into Minecraft. All right, so let's start by looking at the woodcutter's house and talk about the designs, the, the house designs. So 
As you can see, these houses are quite similar. They're uh, built using the same technique with wooden locks as uh, framework or support beams and then two of the frames for the wall material. And when I build these small houses, I use the, r the rule of uh, odd numbers, which states that when you're building your, your framework, you want to use odd numbers. Um, and that means that this wall is, for example, three and you have uh, one in between so only using odd numbers um, this is a wall of five uh, with a or a frame of five and then three blocks in between so that's quite simple but uh, it's, a, it's a common way um, a common technique which makes your houses look well makes it easier it makes it look good it's pretty simple um, I use uh, upside down and, and, and normal oak stairs for framing the roof and then I have these different um, colors different colors of wood um, as the main material um, and as you can see they are a weathered planks so the, the paint has gone off in some places um, adds realism adds a sense of, uh, of the, that these houses have been here a long time and the, the weather has, has worked on them. So that's a, that's a quite neat thing uh, to keep in mind that you want to show the, well, the condition of the houses. And these are old old, uh, and not always as, <laughs> as kept. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get into these houses. This is the woodcutter's house. Um, interiors are really simple, but uh, you still want to detail. So as you can see, all interiors have a, um, a bed, a crafting table, a chest, a sort of light, and then a table to sit. Um, and a fireplace that's important both for, for cooking, but also for uh, well, keeping warm uh, when it gets colder. He has two furnaces or ovens um, and some food around. So that's the basic design. I, uh, for these houses I use a, a lighter palette um, when it comes to flooring. I think it brightens up the room. You have a, a dark ceiling and this bright um, bright floor just... It, it works I think in having these planks which looks pretty rustic, pretty natural. Simple, simple, simple little house. And uh, the, the window panes are of course important too. Um, I wanted this to have a, a little, not gloomy, but yeah, it's not too, it's not too fancy, it's not too expensive, it's a little, uh, everything is a little dirty, so that's why I, I used the brown glass paints. This house have a different facade, but on the inside, you notice that the, the ingredients are the same, just arranged in a, in a different manner. As you can see, we have this. Um, this thing <laughs> it's really just a, a, a table with some support that divides the room and I, when you when you're working in small spaces um, and small houses you really want to create a, a sense that it's not just an open space that you walk into so this by by doing this you know it'd be a little too much having a, a whole you know having a whole uh, lock going through and have walls but this this little divider just uh, makes it feel like there are two separate rooms one for sleeping and one for eating and sitting so that really works over here you have the cooking area little fish fish is hanging some some food um, and again real simple stuff but since this is a farmer you see he has got farmer farmer tools farming tools and you know well lots of greenery um, and the woodcutter he had a little bow saw so always try to incorporate the well think of the professions and what the the people who uh, live in in these houses what they are actually doing um and then showing it you know having having uh, tools and materials lying around if we go to the back of a uh, farmer's house you see here he's got some barrels of food and this is his little garden with corn wheat beans things that would well keep you fed and happy 
let's look at the lamps for a moment. As you can see, I use different lamp designs. Ah, damn. Ah, well, just gotta go with the rain. I use different lamp designs. Um, this one is a bit intimate, a bit private, I think. Whether this one, I use I use this one on the on the roads mainly, and this one in in the private spaces, this little engine. I also have got a, a bigger lamp. But as you can see here, the lantern uh, for the roads and this lantern for private spaces. It's a little, little nice garden. Um, the woodcutter, he's got his workshop over here, um, outside <laughs> in the rain. <laughs> so I guess he he just uh, stack all of his uh, materials up under underneath this uh, in the shed thing. Um, if it well, should begin to rain, but I'll imagine it's quite nice weather down here in the southwestern forests of Arenal. He's got a little stump that's for cutting firewood, and he's got, as you can see, uh, I place different wooden, well, just random wooden stuff to show that he's actually building something. Um, maybe he's the one who made the support and all the, the stuff for the. Or Lord Parrish's house. Anyways, really simple. Axe and bow saw and tools. And a place to store his material. So, so there's that. Um, let's move down here to one of the farmer's houses. As you see, lots of stuff stacked up on the outside. On the inside again, using the room divider. Same ingredients. He's got a little... Um, uh, what's it called? It's called a cupboard. Yeah. Um, and a nice fireplace here. I, I tried a different thing with the fireplace, having it in the corner. Normally, I would have it um, just on, on, a, on a regular wall, but having it in the corner creates again just variation in the interiors, and that's what you want to do. You want to have variation using the same ingredients. Um, this is just a little detail showing that maybe he'll have a pal coming over and they'll play whatever game this is. And a sigil to show the profession. This is a, a cool view, I think, just a little backside porch thing where he can enjoy. Well, not, not this rainy night, but hopefully, well, if it's a sunny day, that'll be a nice place to, to sit and relax. He's got again a shed for storing um, food. Not really a shed; it's just a roof on pillars. I don't know. What, I don't know what you call that. Um, stuff hanging to dry. I think that's a, a cool little detail. Uh, having um, clothes, um, especially because the warmth of the fireplace would well help uh, the drying process. <laughs> so that would make sense having clothes hanging there. Now let's move to his field and. I think it makes sense to see the field in bright daylight. And why not toggle the downfall for a moment. Let's move to the field. And this road, notice how I have trees blocking the view. I ha you're able to see this house over here, but you can't get to it. And you have stuff blocking the view. You don't know where this path, path leads, and that's an important thing. Uh, paths are very important in general. You want to structure your your well, your city or your village or whatever um, in a nice way. Create path that that um, connects different places, but also allows for exploration. You don't want path between every single house. For example, this works so nice uh, with the lake um, kind of dividing uh, these houses fra from each other. And you can look over to that house, but you can't get to it. So walking here, I think this path is really nice. Um, and you again, you have the tree blo blocking the view over here. Let's go to the field. As you can see already here, we've got a uh, little fish storage. That's because I, I thought you maybe go down here to fish in the in the lake or the pond. It's not really a lake. Um, and then you would hang up the fishes here. 
I wanted to uh, do something different with this little, because it's not really f a field, it's way too small, it's just a garden, so I thought it would be nice having it, with, uh, with, you know, fenced in with wood and having a little entrance. And then to, well, to have a little bit of uh, greenery, I'm, I had have grapes growing here, because we are in the south, so it's, it's hot enough for grapes. Um, and grapes are fragile plants, so you'd maybe have some rope to, to keep it all steady and they have something to, to grow. Um, lots of healthy food, turnips, cabbages, cabbage and beans and wheat. So that's, that's it. Pretty simple. Then we have uh, a little place for well, getting water, and I'm not sure this is realistic. You would just grab a bucket and fill it. But I thought this little place, I just wanted to show that they have somewhere to go when, when picking up water. So that's why I think uh, this design works with the chain, even though it doesn't connect, but, you know, whatever. Having, uh, this, is a, this is another cool thing. Little seashell mussel things growing on the on the planks, because uh, uh, and using the jungle plants, they also look quite um, quite weathered and all that. So I I, I use that when building on uh, like close to water. So now the path doesn't go any further, um, and that's uh, what I said before is that you don't want to connect everything. I, in my opinion. Um, you want to create those things which make sense, like the, the farmer, you want to go from there to here, grab water, and go back again. Um, other, you know, maybe maybe the other, other uh, inhabitants, they get their water from somewhere else. But uh, anyways, I, I don't want it to do a path all over there. Just like, um, if you go down here, you're forced to, to explore. So let's do that, actually. Let's walk over here. Oh, not that way. <laughs> let's walk up here and to the next house, the house that we've been looking at. Another fisherman's house, which is right here beside the pond. This house, let's take a look at it from the outside. It's, it's a bit different. Um, <coughs> on this side, well, quite normal. But when I did the interior, I wanted to do something else, I wanted more space, so I had to extend the walls over here. This looks a bit weird, uh, I know, um, but I think to compensate for the weirdness, <laughs> I used them supports, also to show that maybe they just extended this and tried supporting it in a, in a, in a nice way, but you still have a framework of, of um, of oak wood and a uh, roof material of weathered planks. So even when you, um, you know, do something else than, than you normally would, try using the same techniques. Yeah, if, if that makes sense. Um, let's go inside. This house is quite special. It's got um, this little hems. Is it called that in English? I don't know. It's it's a, a like a plateau, um, or a, not a room, but this little thing underneath the ceiling. Um, the reason why I want to do that is I want to fit more people in a, in a smaller space. So we have a family here, and then the boy or girl would sleep up here. And it's really cozy, I think, with the wooden beams and, and the support. It's just... Yeah, I think it really works. And having this um, support, because it's, it's a larger house, again, you want to divide it into smaller parts. So you have the kitchen, which is down. Again, using um, using the levels also. So that's what makes this interior interesting. A combination of different leveling and then uh, dividing it into different sections with wooden support um, beams. Kitchen is quite simple. All you need, um, pots and pans and ovens and furnace and drawers and stuff. Uh, again, here, fishing rod showing the profession. 
a place to hang your clothes, but really simple. And the sickle is because I figured that the mother, if she's not looking after the baby or the, the kid, she may help in the field. This is the last, f uh, well not the last house, but another fisherman's house. The path actually goes this way. You could have connected it, like, to the to that part, but, well, I think this works pretty good. Pretty well. Anyways, um, oh, I, I completely forgot to mention, um, my, my little brother helped me, um, creating this little village, or designing the interiors at least. He did this one completely on his own. But I, but actually, I think this is a brilliant interior. Having the, this is just like um, smaller wooden supports. Um, again, massive wooden support. i be too much in here, maybe. So using these small ones actually works, um, because it's a, a quite open room. You have two beds um, here and another one there. So it's a family of three. And they are fishermen. They have a, a back door leading out to the pier and they are a little boat. And well, they have lots of fish um, hanging in the roof. Or hanging down from the roof, I guess. And a fireplace, of course. So coming out here, they have their own little private pier with uh, a ship. And the guy who lived over there with his family, he's also helping on the ship. I guess you would need like three or four people at least. Uh, one sailing the boat and the other two or three fishing. Um, let's, let's have a, a look at the boats and compare these two boats. As you can see, they are um, quite different. The fishermen's boat are having using these uh, dark, dark wood. I think it's, um, it's it's just a spruce, but it's a different spruce texture. It's a dark spruce texture, and um, I think the the dark wood is, uh, in my in my mind, I associate it with poverty or um, well, at least at least they're not wealthy. They're not really um, they don't care how the boat looks. They just need to fish, um, as opposed to the this boat, which belongs to Lord Parrish. He's painted it white, um, though the paint has, has gone off, because, well, that's, that would happen if you had a boat out here on the sea. Um, but, you know, carved wooden uh, railing thing and, and painted a boat. And this one just has, a, well, a little dirty oak, uh, not oak, but dirty spruce uh, wood materials. They have um, fishes hanging on this rope. This is a, a cool design because of the 3D models in Conquest Reforged. You have a fence which is extended, and then the, when, and when you use the rope, it actually looks like it's tied to the fence. That's so cool. Um, fishes are hanging. You have a place for fish to, to if you need to wash the fish and put it in the barrels. And then this little, what's it called? It's called a, not a net on the ground, a fishing pot. I, th I I think that's for lobsters and stuff. Um, so maybe they they fish for those as well. Little raised platform and a map. So all you need on a ship. And now it's night again. Ooh. Uh, we have the lanterns. I figured it would be like the the road lanterns because they're a bit more sturdy. Out on the sea, you wouldn't have small, fragile lanterns. Um, the pier is really simple, using a mix of oak and jungle wood, and then having the overgrown, muscly jungle wood. Some things coming in from Carathon, because the Lord Perrich, he would sail to Carathon if he needs something else uh, that they, they couldn't get here in the village, and he'll have it. Um, sent here this boat um, this is a nice transition um, I used the overgrown moss mossy stuff when making this because it transists from the path um, and but you still want to have some structure here because they have actually built railing 
So you want to structure it with the, the bricks, but this transition is just brilliant. So I think that really works. Um, I have a place for, well, more fish. Um, but now I think we can't post postpone it anymore. Let's have a look at Lord Parrish's house. You walk over a bridge and come to his house and it says residence of Lord Parrish, astronomist and investigator of truth. I thought that sounded cool. And because he study stuff, well, he's investigating what is the truth. <laughs> well, anyways, um, this interior was made. Um, actually, most of it is made was made by my little brother. So again, credits to him. Let's have a look at it. The first of all, as you come in, you notice a completely different mood. Uh, it's white. It's very white, and that's um, that's a thing which. I associate with wealth as opposed to the dark wood associated with poverty. Um, though this is dark wood, it, it, but, but right, that works because it's carved wood and the contrast is brilliant in here. Um, the stone brick is because of the observatory. Um, the tower would need to go all the way through, otherwise, it would just fall, everything would just fall apart. So, that's an important thing to note. And it's 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 way more open because if you have money, you, you you just have rooms that you don't need to use. You just have hallways and stuff because you don't care because you're rich, um, basically. Uh, so I think that's really cool coming in here, having all this space which is not used at all. Let's go to the room of Lord Parish. Let's look at it in daylight because then you can see the nice uh, little window here and the m mist out there on the, the ocean and the forest in the background nice broad window um, broad bed uh, broad table everything is a little bigger and a little more e extravagant curtains it's expensive back in me medieval times because of the linen or cloth or whatever you'd use and the fireplace is made of brick and he's got bookshelves and all so you clearly see a difference here <laughs> yep and let's move to these are the two rooms of his, his servants um, they don't have windows and everything it's just a place they go to sleep when they're done working and all, all that so that's really simple don't need any crafting table just a chest Now we're moving into the, the kitchen, down to the kitchen, um, which I uh, designed. Again, it's quite open, but we use this support thing um, to, well, divide it so you have a, a path going downwards into the cellars and, uh, you know, over here, which is the kitchen. I have a little window looking out into the garden. You can't really see it, but I, I thought I again I needed something else down here. Um, you could use just normal paints, but I decided to go with this because it's a basement and it's a, want, I wanted it to be a little uh, gloomy. Um, you have everything you need in here: shelves and foods and, and table to work on. Try not to fill it up, even though it's um, it's tempting. But leaving open space like that is important. Um, little cheese over here on the table. That's cool. They have a back door to the garden, but let's go down to the cellars first. Storage, always important. And this room, it's quite brilliant. This room is quite brilliant, I think. Um, it's again, it's open, but you have this table, really simple table. The cheese and uh, some wine. Um, but that really works, having this table that you're able to walk around, it just balances the room. Um, over here we have uh, wine, again using um, the vertical slabs to create depth. In here, same thing going on here, to, uh, you know, um, carpets and, and wine and barrels. And this one is supposed to be beer, I think, because... Um, they would store beer in barrels. This this thing is actually just 
it's just a trap door look at this it's just a trap door which is a wheel um but when you flip it like that it's a wheel and if you flip it the other way it looks like that so you can use that for um, barrels that's pretty cool i think uh, let's get rid of the wheat and let's go to the garden so out here the the gardener he has his, his own little garden here where he, he's growing stuff um, he's got a shed for materials just basic tools not not too much going on here using the bricks and mossy bricks so because they wouldn't really care um, and the the roof is really simple again just the framework of, of oak it's pretty much the same as the houses actually so again try using some of the same design techniques even though this is just a shed and um, then we have a different roofing material um, and using vertical slabs to create depth on the outside also um, we have a nice little pear tree especially designed for this garden um, white fence again it's quite extravagant and a nice view overlooking the ocean out here clothes and well <laughs> it's good I, I, I hung him up underneath this thing because now it's raining and I really like how you how you can see from here the little windows coming from the kitchen. Let's move, 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 move up. Up here, this is a quite unnecessary room. It's actually just a hallway with lots of light coming in, and we have a study corner um, using vertical slabs again. I have more depth. Um, so well yeah it's just short books i guess little lantern in here we have the dining room which was actually surprisingly difficult to furnish because it's large but it's not that large um i, I maybe i wanted it to be larger so he could have guests coming from carathon you know important people but now it's just we have room for one two three four five and an, uh, you have an extra chair here. I think that's a cool detail because you, you would want to walk here. But if you have people coming for dinner, you could just put another chair there. The Lord, he's got his own fancy chair. Um, and you've got this little thing with glasses of, uh, of wine. And an, a nice little um, storage room. Oh. Without wheat. And... Before we go to the observatory, I want that to be the grand final. Let's just have a look out on his little porch thing. Uh, he can sit here and, and read and enjoy a book and a nice view. Um, hopefully on a sunny day. And he's got his own little garden here, um, which is just flowers and, and beautiful stuff. So that's not a f uh, uh, really, would you say functional garden? It's just for for decoration. Ah, all that wheat. Um, and now let's go to the observatory. Let's toggle the downfall because the observatory is well. It's more beautiful in in sunny, nice weather. Um, up here he's got his books and everything um, so this is right the, the the top level of the house before the observatory and we got a ladder going up there um, so let's do it so this is the observatory of Lord Parish as you can see he's got all kinds of weird instruments for well researching I, I don't know what everything does you know I know that this is an hourglass isn't, isn't that what's called yeah uh, <laughs> and then he's got a map and stuff to write this is the thing you would look in to to well study the the sky um, 
and when you're doing these things in Minecraft, you you just have to be cr creative. There's no, you know, you can't build a realistic uh, observatory, and you're not, you you don't want to try to build it realistic. I think you want to try to build it so that it looks possible, so that it looks realistic. Um, I wanted lots of light, lots of air, space to to look at, and then just this instrument. Um, which supposedly he just used it to, to peek at the sky and have uh, it all zoomed in and that. Um, the wooden support is just brilliant up here. I think that really works. Um, otherwise, the the room would just be unbalanced. But the, this, the, the curves, the balance in here, it's really nice. And everything is centered around this middle piece. That's a cool room. So before we end this video off, I still need to show the, you the house of the hunter and the house of the herbalist. Because they both live uh, further away from the actual village. They live by themselves out there. So let's go to the house of the hunter first. And let's have a quick look at, at this road. Because as I mentioned before, roads are important. So this road have, have, it has two functions. First is to get to the hunter's house, which is over there. And the other is for the woodcutter to um, get out in the forest and cut some wood. So he has this cart. So you want to make sure that the road is actually broad enough for the cart to fit. So that's again important details here. Because roads are important. As we move here, you can actually see the house, the house of the hunter. But you can't see it completely. I think that's a nice detail. You come here but the trees are blocking the view. And then as you walk around this tree, you see the house right there. And immediately you get this feeling that, well, it's a hunter because he's got rabbits and stuff hanging out. He's got a tanning rack and a table for cleaning skins and hides and stuff when he's, well, cutting the animal. I don't know. I don't know what you say. Skinning the animal. In here you'll notice a different feeling and that's mainly due to uh, the the flooring which is different I I wanted to keep it uh, brown brownish here we out in the forest we want a little dark and gloomy and rustic looking look <laughs> uh, well I just thought the brown look was real nice um, for the solitary hunter but, well, ingredients are the same, uh, tables a little different, uh, chairs a little different, but ingredients in this house is the same. No room divi divider here. I'm not really sure why. You could have had it here, but I, I needed the space for arrows and tables for him to have his bow and stuff on. You could have done that, but I think this works. A nice large fireplace for keeping warm. The path just kind of uh, well is dissolved here into the wild. So he'll go out hunting there. Now we need to go all the way through the city and to the herbalist. And he or she, I don't know if it's a he or she, time will tell. Uh, he or she lives uh, to the other side this way so moving along here we've got a nice little well tiny tiny bridge and then the this turns into a dirt road because again functionality no one would use this road beside the herbalist um, so there's no carts that need to be pulled it's just a road for the herbalist so it makes sense just having a dirt as we en enter uh, the, the garden of the herbalist, you immediately see like uh, flowers and weird plants that we haven't seen before, mushrooms even. So you, you'll see that someone um, is living here as in, who has interest in plants. Again, very brown in here, but a uh, little more greenery, of course, since it's a herbalist. Shelves for weird ingredients. This thing, 
I don't know what it's called. It's called a, a scale. Well, a scale for measuring. Um, again, measuring in ingredients, pots and pans, and simple stuff. A little sickle for uh, working in the garden and mushrooms growing. A nice large fireplace. <coughs> Out here we have the, the backyard um, garden with different plants. Some hemp. Uh, I'm not sure if, if it's actual actually hemp in in the well <laughs> in, in what not in real life because this is not this is Minecraft but you know uh, if it's supposed to be hemp this is supposed to be tobacco at least um, and we've got tobacco hanging and drying here um, again notice here how I I I block the view. Uh, well, everything is like centered around this large tree again, so you have to walk around and you feel like you, everything is covered in leaf, like the canopy really creates a really nice mood in here because you feel like you're in something, <laughs> you're beneath the trees and then you, it opens up here. So that's a really nice change of moods. Um, and a little closed-in garden almost. The herbalist has an apprentice, as I men mentioned before. He or she well, lives out here. He's got his own little storage um, and really simple stuff and, and like uh, extremely large fireplace for a very small house. But keeping warm is important, so that's just how it's gotta be. So that was the house of the herbalist and with that said, we have now explored this little village. Of course, there are details around we haven't been looking at, like birds' nests, birds, a uh, little toad, and ve the vegetation. We haven't talked uh, that much about that. But well, there'll be a show around coming for uh, the forest, um, the forest biome in general. So we'll be talking about landscaping in, in other videos. Well, uh, so with that being said, thank you for watching. This was Game of Thrones and stay tuned, stay positive and stay hydrated. See you.